Good morning. Uh, we want to welcome everyone to this commemoration of our 2020 School of Medicine graduates. Um, I'm Donald Brady. I'm the Senior Associate Dean for Health Sciences Education at the School of Medicine, and I'm the Executive Vice President for Educational Affairs at Vanderbilt University Medical Center, and I'll be your MC uh, for this event today. Thanks to all the family, friends, faculty, parents, loved ones for watching this event via YouTube and Zoom. Today, we will celebrate some special residents and faculty that are being honored by this class. We will also hear special messages from our Dean, a few faculty, and Dr. Varun Menon, the president of this class. Yes, they are doctors now. Their degrees were conferred at 9.30 this morning. But most of all, we will celebrate our 2020 graduates. They're becoming physicians. There are many accomplishments, and we'll see and hear them take their oaths as new physicians. Of course, we wish we could gather in person, but that said, we also acknowledge it is very important to celebrate this class for the wonderful people they are and all that they've achieved. To begin this event, I would like to introduce Dr. Jeff Balzer, Dean of the School of Medicine, President and CEO of Vanderbilt University Medical Center, and a fellow of Vanderbilt School of Medicine graduate with me uh, to speak to this class, Dean Balzer. Thank you, Dean Brady. Welcome students and families to this time of celebration. While we look forward to welcoming you back when we can all be together for a formal graduation ceremony, it's important to take a moment to recognize and savor what you've all accomplished. The world was always a complicated place, but now we understand another dimension to that complexity. The paths you have chosen are careers of service through care. And these careers are ones where our humanity is intensely important to what we do every day. Because we invest much of ourselves as we deliver care, our work can at times be a source of sadness, but much more often a source of joy. We also know that with these careers of service comes professional responsibilities that include sacrifice. Most often that sacrifice is time. Time spent away from family, spouses, children, and friends. The diseases and conditions that you are about to spend a lifetime trying to better understand or treat don't honor the boundaries of the five-day work week. So we are all challenged to find balance. Remembering that this life of service is a marathon, not a sprint. The people who love you and support you are vital to your health and to your sustainability through what are certain to be difficult, if not extraordinary, challenges in science and in healthcare. Speaking of extraordinary challenges, you are finishing your degrees at an extraordinary time the middle of the most significant global pandemic in recorded history. So this is very likely not what you thought it would feel like as you finished your medical school degree. Certainly, being unable to celebrate this incredible moment together in person is something we would never choose. But consider this, we've all been building new muscles. In a normal year, you would graduate exquisitely well-trained to gather all the data, analyze it meticulously, and after then considering all the possible outcomes, take action. However, this pandemic is forcing us to tolerate ambiguity, to take the data we can find, trust our gut, and make tough decisions. At work, as we train, and even in our personal lives. As you experience this and then look back and see what I know will be success, your confidence will grow and so will your resilience. The colloquial, colloquialism for what I'm describing is grit. It will sustain you and even propel you to careers in leadership in ways that complement the incredible education you've received here at Vanderbilt. Please know how proud we are, and I am, to have been part of your lives at such an important time. And know that we are with you as your journey unfolds. You are, and always will be, Vanderbilt. Thank you.
Thank you, Dean Balzer. That was wonderful and a terrific uh, message to the class. Uh, I would like to now introduce Dr. Varun Menon, class president, to acknowledge our faculty marshals, after which a number of members of this graduating class will honor house staff and faculty for their contributions to their education. Dr. Menon. Thank you, Dr. Brady, and good morning to all watching at home. On behalf of the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine, class of 2020, it is an honor to recognize our marshals. These are four highly respected members of the faculty that have exempt, ex exercised preeminent influence on the life and times of the graduating class during our years at VMS. This year's marshals chosen by the class graduation committee are Dr. Bonnie Miller, former senior associate dean for health sciences education, who retired at the end of last year and who led our class through most of our medical school years as our greatest champion. Dr. Andre Churchwell, Senior Associate Dean for Diversity Affairs, our wisest mentor and friend, always there for, the, for us in the hardest of times. Dr. Stephen Eskin, Assistant Professor of Surgery and Director of the Surgery Clerkship, with the best words of wisdom and the best words of comfort. And finally, Dr. Howard Dukes, Professor of Medicine, Rheumatology, and Immunology. Loved by the class of 2020 for showing us the best of the art and science of the profession that we have accepted as our own. And who was taken from us all too early on October 28th, 2019 at the age of 64. He is represented today by his wife, our dear teacher, Dr. Catherine Fuchs, Assistant Professor of Psychiatry. Please join me in rec recognizing our marshals we cannot thank you enough for what you've done for us to get us to this moment. And now Molly Ekman will present the House Staff Clinical Teaching Awards and Samuel Trump. The House Staff Clinical Teaching Awards are presented each year to the five interns or residents deemed to be the best teachers and role models by fourth year medical students, with the top student winning the J. William Hillman Award. Our first winner is Dr. Sumit Mehta, one of the OBGYN chiefs. Dr. Mehta is recognized by the class of 2020 for his outstanding teaching skills and commitment to medical students. Dr. Mehta always took the time to teach and provide opportunities for students to participate in procedures and surgery. I had the privilege of working with Dr. Mehta during my maternal fetal medicine in AI, and he always made sure I felt like a valuable member of the team and always take time to get me involved in everything from bedside ultrasounds to C-section, regardless of how busy the service was. Everyone who got to work with him during the OBGYN clerkship agreed he is one of the best residents to work with in the entire hospital. Congratulations, Dr. Mehta. Our next winner is Dr. Lee Richardson, PGY4 med Teas resident. Dr. Richardson is being recognized for his commitment to medical student education, both on and off the ward. Dr. Richardson is known among students for his ability to provide excellent teaching and valuable feedback. He always makes medical students feel like important members of the team and will always say hi in the halls even long after you've rotated off the service. He also volunteers his time to things like observe best sessions for students and teachers, and his feedback is highly valued. Valued. Congratulations, Dr. Richardson. Our next winner is Dr. Shannon Skinner, former medicine chief now working in palliative care. Many of our class know Dr. Skinner from her time as chief and students universally recognize her general friendliness and openness to everyone she works with. Even in my own brief interactions with her during a palliative care consult, she immediately gave off a sense of deep caring for our patient while also purposely making sure I was involved as a team member. Numerous classmates say that she makes a point of always teaching students and going the extra mile to tailor learning to the student's particular interests. Students continuously observe her boundless compassion for patients and their families, sitting and talking with them for however long they need. Her kindness, lack, knack for teaching, and sense of care for both her patients and her team members embody all of the best qualities you would want in a physician 
and particularly a palliative care specialist. And our class wanted to recognize Dr. Skinner because of this. Congratulations. And finally, our last winner, um, the Clinical Teaching Award for Health Staff goes to Dr. Pierce Trumbo, um, a PGY3 internal medicine resident. Our class overlapped with Pierce for one year in medical school, and many remember him from playing an integral role at Shade Tree Clinic, helping Nashville's underserved get the care that they need. Dr. Trumbo's passion for service has translated to residency, and he will con be continuing this mission as chief resident next year. Students love working with Dr. Trumbo, not only because he is a role model for compassionate service, but also because of his teaching and leadership abilities. He makes medical students feel welcome to the team and encourages their thorough participation in clinical care, while also always taking time to teach and facilitate their growth as learners. I wanna personally thank Dr. Dr. Trumbo for his mentorship and guidance over the years. Anytime I bugged him with a question about a research project or residency, really anything, he was always willing to sit down and chat for however long we needed. On behalf of our whole class, huge congratulations, Dr. Trumbo. The, um, so for the top vote recipient in deciding the House Staff Awards is the winner of the J. William Hillman Award. Um, this award was created in 1971 in honor of Dr. Hillman. And he was known for being an exceptional teacher and clinician. He served as the founding chairman of the Department of Orthopedic Surgery and Rehabilitation until his death in 1970 at the age of 49. He worked closely with students and house staff, often long into the hours of the night. So this award is created in his spirit of dedication to education. So it is my pleasure and my honor to present this award on, the on behalf of the class of 2020 to Dr. Rachel Strait, so Rachel is a graduate of UAB dentistry and she matched to Vanderbilt for her oral surgery residency, which included doing her MD as part of her residency. So she joined our class for our preclinical and clinical years. And uh, many of uh, all of us were fortunate to, to get to work with her and get to know her over the, the few years. Um, she was always not only a leader in our class, but someone we could always turn to for, for advice or for help. And I think most of us could spend a long time listening to the medical minutia or the technical skills she, she taught us. But I think more importantly, she was always a great role model for the more, I guess, general and philosophical art of medicine. Um, and as we begin residency, I know at least I personally, whenever I'm dealing with a tough situation, I'll, I'll genuinely be thinking, okay, well, how would, how would Rachel uh, handle this situation? So, and I know I'm not the only one. So she really is a, a great representative for how to be a good resident and a good teacher. And we're so grateful to have had the chance to work with her and, uh, and to learn from her. So this award cannot be more well-deserved. Congratulations, Rachel. Hello everyone. Uh, I'm glad we get to recognize our outstanding faculty with all these awards today. It is my pleasure to present the Davies Award. First given in 1984, the Jack Davies Award is an avenue for recognizing excellence in teaching the basic sciences. The award is named in honor of its first recipient, the former professor of cell biology and chair of anatomy at Vanderbilt. This is given to a faculty member who works with students in the first year. Now, the winner of this award, really by definition, has to play a monumental role in all of us becoming doctors, which is why we, the class of 2020, have decided that you, Dr. Eli Zimmerman, are our choice for the Davies Award, for all that you've done for us during first year as a brain behavior movement block director, teaching us all about neurology, the brain, and the nervous system. Dr. Zimmerman, you really cared so much about promoting our development as students, as future doctors, and also as humans. You were always willing to be a powerful presence of support for us, and we appreciate you so much. Our whole class loves you, and we're so glad to have had you as our teacher. It's been a real pleasure twinning with you for these past four years, but it's been an even greater gift to have had you as our teacher, our mentor, and as our friend. Congratulations, Dr. Zimmerman, on receiving the 2020 Davies Award. And now I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Steph Hadley. 
The Thomas E. Brittingham Clinical Teaching Award was first given in 1990 in honor of that hematologist oncologist, an outstanding teacher and clinician. During his many years at Vanderbilt directing the internal medicine clerkship, he was described by his interns as the most careful and thoroughly fair man who always uncovered something new and important about his patients. This award distinguishes a faculty member teaching in the clinical years, both full and part-time, who is felt by fourth-year students to be an exceptional teacher, mentor, and role model. There is no faculty member who better exemplifies these qualities than Dr. Travis Crook. Whether interested in pediatrics or not, each student from the class of 2020 can attest that Dr. Crook makes the pediatrics clerkships an amazing experience for everyone. He brings so much enthusiasm and passion for pediatric medicine to the hospital every day that it's impossible not to learn something new. During morning reports and lectures, he pushes clerkship students to think critically and is always supportive no matter how out of the box an answer may be. The manner in which he conducts master clinical teacher encounters demonstrates not only how much he values student learning, but also how incredibly he cares for his patients. Those of us entering pediatrics and family medicine have been lucky to spend even more time with Dr. Kirk during the immersion phase, benefiting enormously from his mentorship in clinical pediatrics as well as throughout the residency application process. Thank you, Dr. Crook, for embodying the spirit of Dr. Brittingham and having such a positive and lasting impact on the class of 2020. And next, Lauren and Kiana will present the Immersion Awards. The Immersion Awards highlight teachers, mentors, coaches, and other faculty in the highly individualized post-clerkship phase that uses clinical context to build upon prior learning. This award recognizes five individuals with the top vote receiving the Bonnie M. Miller Award. We are excited to present the Immersion Awards to four outstanding faculty members. Our first recipient is Dr. Travis Crook. Dr. Crook is a pediatric hospitalist who is very involved in various levels of our training serving as co-director of the pediatrics clerkship and as a Robinson FAA. Students who are going into pediatrics especially benefit from his mentorship as he directs the pediatrics acting internship and interest group. He also serves as faculty co-director of the students' teachers course, which is fitting because he is the type of warm, thoughtful, and fun educator I think we all hope to become. He is especially appreciated for his enthusiasm and for providing insightful, actionable feedback that pushes us to become better clinicians and educators. Congratulations, Dr. Cook. Our second recipient is Dr. Brian Drolet. Dr. Drolet is a plastic surgeon with a passion for medical education and mentorship. From our very first hand lecture during BBM first year, Dr. Drolet showed us how invested he was in making sure that anatomy and surgery were as fun and approachable as possible. He transformed the plastic surgery electives into some of the most popular classes amongst aspiring surgeons and is undoubtedly a big part of the reason why some of our class members have gone into plastic surgery as a career. Outside of the classroom in OR, Dr. Drolet continues to show his dedication to us as wellness faculty advisor and Batson College FAA. He truly embodies the type of mentorship and care that many of us hope to one day provide to future students. I've been so lucky to have Dr. Drolet as a mentor. Congratulations. Our next recipient is Dr. Michael Fowler. Dr. Fowler is an endocrinologist and is highly involved in every year of our education. During the immersion phase, he primarily works with students as a medical director at Shade Tree Clinic and through the Diabetes Integrated Science course, which we leave impressively confident in titrating insulin and managing diabetes. We especially appreciate that with his patient's calm demeanor and use of silence as a laser pointer, you can always tell that Dr. Fowler is fully engaged in his interactions with you whether it be listening to your plan, carefully explaining a pathway or the logic behind a dose adjustment, or pushing you to go a step further. We have all learned a lot from his teaching, but also his example. Congratulations, Dr. Fowler. Our final recipient is Dr. Eli Zimmerman. As both an FMK course director and a clerkship director, we had the opportunity to learn from Dr. Zimmerman both in the classroom and on the wards. Dr. Zimmerman is perhaps the only person who could make learning neuroanatomy fun for an entire class of first year students on month number 12. He's the type of teacher that dedicates the extra time to make sure that everyone's on the same page. He memorized all of our names before BBM even started so that he could connect with us individually and continues to be invested in our class during our immersion phase. Dr. Zimmerman demonstrates the patience and investment that we all hope to one day embody. 
congratulations, Dr. Zimmerman. Congratulations again, and thank you to our four Immersion Award winners for all you have done. Next, Joe Gibeon will present the Miller Award. Thank you, Lauren and Kiana. It's my great privilege to introduce the recipient of the Bonnie M. Miller Award. The top vote recipient in the selection of the Immersions Awards receives the Miller Award, which is given in honor of Dean Bonnie Miller, the champion of Curriculum 2.0, who introduced this highly individualized post-clerkship phase. The winner of this year's award is Dr. Scott Pearson. Dr. Pearson is a master surgeon and educator. After completing a surgical oncology fellowship at the prestigious MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, he came to Vanderbilt as surgical faculty where he has spent the last 21 years. In addition to his practice, he has taken a vested interest in medical education. He's a first year anatomy instructor and case-based learning small group facilitator and is known for his senior level anatomy courses. He leads a first year student research course and serves as a portfolio coach. Finally, he has found time to pursue literary interests, authoring two medical novels, Rupture and Public Anatomy. Students light up when asked about Dr. Pearson. No matter what field a student is going into, Dr. Pearson makes you feel important. On a personal note, I took Dr. Pearson's medical imaging and anatomy course last January. In this course, students are expected to dissect independently. I had a difficult time with my dissection, which shook my confidence greatly as I'm going into a surgical field. In response, Dr. Pearson took me up to the anatomy lab for one-on-one -on -one instruction. In spite of his busy schedule and clinical practice, he spent three hours on a Wednesday afternoon tutoring a student who wasn't even going into the same field as he is. In doing so, he completely changed my confidence in myself and my career choice. I'll never forget that day, and I know I'm not the only one with experiences like this. It's stories like these that make him a champion. His resume is impressive, but his prioritization of our education and deep caring for us as individuals are the reasons that we recognize him today. It is my great honor to introduce Dr. Scott Pearson as this year's recipient of the Bonnie M. Miller Award. Thank you. And now Dr. Leah Chisholm will present the Johnson Award. Thank you, Dr. Gibeon. Founded in 20, 2003 to honor the eponymous physician, the John Johnson Award is meant to be given to the faculty member who demonstrates integrity, humility, and honor in his or her practice and life. It is someone who sets an example for students by living out the ideals presented in the professional oath. The recipient of this award is someone who continually dedicates her time to others and, effort, and from day one has made efforts to be a lending hand to each and every member of our class. This faculty member embodies the core values of our personal oath to care for those in need, give back to the community, and devote themselves to others. She has gone out of her way to ensure students are cared for, all while balancing her own duties as a wife and a mother. She has been a supporting rock for us students since our very first day of medical school, guiding us through difficult classes, clinical rotation, residency applications, and even our own oath writing. She has committed herself to not only being the ideal physician, but also an educator, a role model, and a friend. On behalf of the class of 2020, I am proud to announce this year's recipient of the Johnson Award is Dean Amy Fleming. I will now hand it over to Varun to continue presenting awards. The Leonard Toe Humanism in Medicine Award. This prestigious award is given to recognize one graduating medical student and one faculty member for exemplifying outstanding humanism in medicine by their compassion and sensitivity in the delivery of care to patients and their families. This honor comes with a monetary reward and is supported by the Arnold P. Gold Foundation. For her outstanding years of service to the class of 2020 as our Dean, it is my honor to present the Faculty Toe Humanism Award to Dr. Bonnie Miller. Dr. Miller, a general surgeon by specialty and a medical educator who pioneered Curriculum 2.0, embodies the humanist tradition in medicine one of caring with deep compassion for patients, not only for them, but also for her colleagues and the community around her. Her acts of charity and service throughout her career have been an inspiration to not only our class, but to the many that she has led in her time at VMS. In addition to presenting Dean Miller with the Toe Award, I wanna now present her with this commemorative album as a gift from the classes of 2020, 2021, and 2022, her final classes as Dean. Designed by VMS third year student Jessica Zick, the album includes images from across her time at Vanderbilt with photos and quotes from alumni and students alike, whom she has touched through countless memories in her many years of service. Dean Miller, I wanna say on behalf of the class of 2020, 
as well as the many other classes that you have served. Thank you so much for shepherding us through these years of medical school and for making us all the better for it. At this time, I want to announce that the class of 2020 will be making its class gift as the creation of a new fund for the Shade Tree Clinic, the entirely student-run free clinic that cares for the underserved of Greater Nashville. The class of 2020 legacy fund will begin with one of the largest initial donations by a graduating class in school history, almost $2,000, which will support clinic operations and educational initiatives. It will also help Shade Tree provide meals to patients with food insecurity during this present pandemic crisis. We envision that the fund will continue as an ongoing contribution effort from all of us in the class of 2020, sustained hopefully by more generous attending salaries in the not so distant future. Thank you to the Shade Tree leadership for working with the class on finding the perfect way for us to give back to the community. And special thanks to Lauren Madavish, our class treasurer and secretary for spearheading this effort. And now I will present the final faculty award for today, the shovel. The shovel, it was first presented in 1962. Although directed to the faculty member regarded as the best lecturer, this was not meant to be rigorously defined. An addendum to the award description reads, and forgive me, Dean Brady, it's been a while since Latin, hic laguntur nomina iorum qui maxima cum eloquentia tari excrementum, or here are selected the names of those who sling bovine feces with greatest eloquence. This award expresses the true spirit in which it is awarded, with both sincerity and good humor. One of the greatest traditions at Vanderbilt, the graduating class gives the shovel by popular choice to the faculty member who has had the most positive and meaningful influence on their lives and education. In other words, the shovel is the highest honor that can be granted by the class, and the recipient is considered to be the favorite faculty member of the class. This award was already presented in a surprise Zoom bombing by the class during the anatomy faculty's meeting in April. So I'm elated to announce again that the winner of the shovel is none other than Dr. A. Scott Pearson. Dr. Pearson, an oncological surgeon by specialty, a prolific author and a beloved professor in both the medical school and the College of Arts and Sciences, has had a remarkable influence on all of us, from the anatomy lab to the lecture hall. In return for all that he has done for us, we will, in our practice, do our very best to make him proud. It is now with pleasure that I invite Dr. Pearson to give the annual shovel lecture to the class of 2020, our final lecture of medical school. Thank you so much, Maroon, for those words and thank you for your leadership for your class over these four years, and especially during these final, these last difficult months. I thank you for that. First, I wanna congratulate each of you for such a tremendous accomplishment. And I wanna congratulate all of your families and significant others who have sacrificed in order for you to reach this point. Congratulations. I feel so honored to be this year's recipient of the Shovel Award and also the Bonnie Miller Award, which I had no idea that was coming. And I can't wait to listen back to those comments because I couldn't hear them all, but I thank you for, for that. Um, as Varun mentioned, I could have not been more surprised a few weeks ago when what I thought was a routine anatomy meeting by Zoom, your faces started appearing on the screen and I immediately thought that you were having a class meeting and I was in the wrong place and I was about to log off but I'm so glad that I um, stayed on and I've come to know that that is Zoom bombing. Uh, and I'm no, I think that only really cool people get Zoom bombed. So I thank you for that. I thank my wife, Robin, who's seen patients this morning for helping to set that up. And I thank my family, my sons, John and Will for their support. So during that Zoom session, that award session, your president, Varun, mentioned to me that I would be giving this keynote address and then he also said that this would be your final lecture, your last lecture to the class of 2020, which took on a certain amount of weight and gravity. But then he also said that you have between four and seven minutes to deliver this. So I'm going to get on with it. So uh, since your president said that this was a lecture, I assumed, Varun, that you meant anatomy. 
So I've selected 40 key slides that I want to review. No, I'm not here to teach you anything new, but I am here to remind you what you already know. And to do that, we're going to take a brief journey through your medical school career, and I'm going to move quickly, so hang on. So since this is a lecture, I'm going to have three points, but if it's a lecture at Vanderbilt, what do we call those learning objectives? You thought you were done with learning objectives, but we have a few more LOs. These are gonna be simple. And the first point, the first learning objective is to know your patient. Notice that I said patient and not patients in the singular, know your patient. Number two, honor the rituals of medical care. Honor the rituals of medical care. And the last point, which will take some explaining, so hang on, hang in there, get the ice chips yourself. Get the ice chips yourself. So first, know your patient. We're gonna go back to the very first day of case-based learning, CBL, and my group's there, and Sarah, if you have those, those groups. If you remember, during the first days of CBL, the first day of CBL, I ask you three questions. I first ask you, where are you from? Then I ask you, what is your favorite book, which got a few eye rolls, favorite book. And then I ask you, if you had to choose that day, and again, this is four years ago, what field of medicine you would go into, what would you choose? Now, why did I ask those questions? Because I wanted to know something about you as a person beyond just you as a medical student. So, Varun Manan is from Martinsburg, West Virginia. His favorite book is Animal Farm. Varun is an historian, and from the beginning, he was going into internal family medicine. The point is, your patients are persons first. Know about their personhood. Know about where your patients are from. This is their identity. Dr. Emily Long from Longview, Texas. Dr. Whitney Wiley, who's there on the screen, from Mobile, Alabama. Dr. Clark Stallings, from just up here in Clarksville, Maryland. And by the way, his favorite book was Freakonomics. Our patients sometimes tell us that the medical care that they received is state of the art, the technology is great, but they also sometimes relay that I really didn't know my doctor and my doctor didn't know me. Know your patients as a person. This is personalized medicine. Learning objective number two, honor the rituals of medical care. For that, we are going back to the first day of anatomy lab. We entered that space, we made comments to honor in, at the, um, our silent teaching partners, our body donors, and then each of you moved in groups to those tables. You opened up the tables, you unwrapped those bodies, you did a complete exam, and then you rewrapped those bodies. And you would do this by ritual throughout the entire year. And upon closing those tables, I was so gratified to see those bottles of 409 that wiped down the tables. You were being good stewards of that space. This was all along about medical care, about the care of the individual patient. Yes, it was about anatomy and we learned so much and that is so important, but it was always about the care of the individual patient. Don't let the CT scan become the surrogate for a good patient exam. Touch in medical care is the foundation by which trust in the doctor-patient relationship is established. Now, in today's pandemic medicine, that looks a little different. We have to have eye contact with patients above the mask, because that may be only what they see. We may have on gloves and gowns, but we can still honor the ritual of medical care with an exam. We have to be safe. This may look different going forward. If we go back to the pandemic of 1918, from which millions of patients lost their lives, doctors did not stop examining their patients. And we did pretty well for 100 years. Now today, we have to be safe. That may look different. But I implore you as the leaders of, and future leaders of medicine, to determine what that looks like for the next 100 years. How will we interact with patients? When is it appropriate to do telemedicine? When do we meet with patients and do, a, do an exam? 
patients expect that medical touch. And it's up to us to determine how that happens. Don't let outside agencies determine these policies. You determine these policies. Our patients deserve this. My final learning objective, my final point, um, and this is perhaps the most simple, but perhaps the most important, is get the ice chips yourself. If your patient asks for a cup of ice or a few ice chips, don't say, I'll let your nurse know. Get the ice chips yourself. When I was an intern, we were making rounds one morning and we were leaving the room and my patient stopped me and said, doc, my mouth is so dry. Can I have a few ice chips? And I said, sure, I'll let your nurse know. I left and a few hours later, I returned to that room and my patient said, I never got those ice chips. Get the ice chips yourself. And the point is, if patients can depend upon us in the small moments, they will trust us in the big moments. At the end of the day, go by and see your patient one more time, even if they don't need seeing. This is good medical care and it will nourish your careers. My time is over. I thank you. I applaud you. Go forth and celebrate. Be ready. Thank you, Dr. Pearson. That was that was truly amazing lecture. Um, thank you for all you do for all of us, for the faculty, as well as the students and the graduates of this class. And thanks to all and congratulations to all of the house staff and faculty who have just won awards. Now though, we're gonna transition from awards and honors of the faculty and house staff to awards and honors of our graduates themselves. And so to start this, let me introduce uh, Dean Bill Coutrere, Associate Dean for Undergraduate Medical Education, and Dean Kim Vincent, Associate Dean for Diversity Affairs, to begin our recognition of some special achievements by members of this class. Dean Coutrere. Hello, everyone. I am so absolutely excited for you. Dean Vincent and I have the privilege today of honoring some outstanding students who have received achievement or recognition in different ways during their course of study here. We would like to start by recognizing our graduates who have been inducted into one of our honor societies. First, we have Alpha Omega Alpha Honor Medical Society. You will see the names of our AOA graduates on your screen. AOA recognizes students who are dedicated to the belief that in medicine, we can improve care for all by recognizing high educational achievement, honoring gifted teaching, encouraging the development of leaders in academia and the community, supporting the ideals of humanism, and promoting service to others. Next, we would like to honor our Gold Humanism Honor Society. The names of the GHHS graduates are on your screen now. GHHS recognizes individuals who are exemplars of humanistic patient care, who demonstrate excellence in humanistic clinical care, leadership, compassion, and dedication to service. Congratulations to both of these groups of graduates. Good morning, everyone, and congratulations to the class of 2020. Um, I'm going to recognize some of our certificate students, and our first certificate recognition goes to students who have received a graduate certificate in global health while completing their MD degree. These graduates completed an interdisciplinary program through a formalized global health education curriculum. This certificate se seeks to equip students to gain problem-solving skills that can be applied to current and emerging global health challenges. These students are listed on the screen, and the ones receiving the certificate include Elise Clemens, Emily Moore, B.D. Odinkamalu, Samuel Trump, and Nathaniel Johannes. Next, I would like to present the Glasgow Rubin Certificate of Commendation. This certificate, sponsored by the American Medical Women's Association, recognizes our female students who have demonstrated outstanding academic achievement. AMWA for over a century has functioned to advance women in medicine and improve women's health. Their certificate serves to reaffirm their commitment to female physicians, encouraging their continuing achievement throughout their career. Um, this year's graduates receiving the certificate are Kate Frost, Stephanie Hadley, Kiana Jackson, Catherine Convents, Jennifer Marvin Peake, Sydney Payne, and UC Zhang. Congratulations to these women. We will now recognize graduates who have received an individual recognition. 
from either a department or division here at Vanderbilt or an outside partner. These students receive these awards directly in some way, but we wanted to recognize them here today as well. All right, the Albert Weinstein Prize in Medicine for Jennifer Marvin Peake, the American Academy of Neurology Prize for Excellence in Neurology, Sean Barton, the Amos Christie Award in Pediatrics, Nicholas Harris, the Award for Excellence in Adult Infectious Disease, Emily Moore and Nathaniel Johannes. The Award for Excellence in Pediatric Infectious Disease, Kevin Grapel and Catherine Convents. The Beecham Scholarship in Psychiatry, David Suh. The David Zeller Otolaryngology Award, Anne Sun Lowry. The David Orth Award in Endocrinology, Lauren Barr. The Dixon Burns Award in Medical Ethics, Samuel Trump. Excellence in Emergency Medicine, Irene Hanna. Excellence in Public Health, given by the US Public Health Services, one of our outside partners, Justin Banner. The Gerald Finischel Award in Neurology, Matthew Puchetti. The William Scott Jr. Prize in Surgery, Lauren Matavish. And the Donald Gass Award in Ophthalmology, Russell Day and UC Jing. The James T. Guafney Prize in Anesthesiology, Kate Frost. The Lonnie Burnett Award in Obstetrics and Gynecology is to Alexandra Self Sunderman. The John Shapiro Award for Excellence in Pathology goes to Sarah Fitzlaw. The Mildred Stallman Award in Pediatrics, Stephanie Hadley. The Orthopedic Surgery Clerkship Award to Colby Woolman. The Oscar Crawford Award for Diabetes Research to Rachna Hollier. The Richard P. Johnston Jr. Award in Pediatrics to Catherine Convent. The Renton Award in Radiological Sciences to Ariel Kniss. And the Rudolph Kampmeyer Prize in Medicine to Shane Freak. The Sten Vermund Award in Global Health, D.D. Odinkamalu. The Tennessee Academy of Family Physicians is another one of our partners and presents the Outstanding Student and Family Medicine Award to Lauren Barr. The Tom Nesbitt Award presented by the Nashville Academy of Medicine to Baru Menon. Congratulations to all of these individuals on their recognition and achievements. We are so proud of you. I will now turn it back over to Dr. Brady for the school award presentation. Thank you, Dean Vincent. So it's my honor to present our School of Medicine Awards. These awards are chosen by the administration, faculty, and house staff of the School of Medicine in Vanderbilt University Medical Center. To start off our presentation, I would like to call Dr. Kyla Terhune, Associate Dean for Graduate Medical Education, to present the first School of Medicine Award. Dr. Terhune. Thank you, and congratulations to all of you. The Hospital Award of Excellence is chosen by the Chief Residents of the Services and it recognizes the fourth year medical student who has contributed the most towards excellent patient care by demonstrating sensitivity, compassion, and concern and clinical responsibilities to the patients of Vanderbilt University Medical Center, and I would add beyond. Uh, the winner of this award is Samuel Trump, and I just want to read two sentences from his nomination. Samuel has been teamed up, this is from the person who nominated, Teamed up with myself and the rest of our street psychiatry team for the better part of two years, he dedicated some of the free time he had to walk the streets and woods of Nashville one morning every week, looking for the medically vulnerable homeless population of our city in a population that is notorious for declining treatment. Our team had an incredible rate of accepting vaccines and Samuel was a huge part of that success. He treated all with the utmost respect and dignity. And I have no doubt the work he did saved lives in this population by preventing disease. Congratulations, Samuel. Our next award is the Jeffrey David Chazen Award, which is given for innovation in medical education and was established by the Chazen family. This award recognizes students and faculty who have made special contributions to the educational programs of Vanderbilt University School of Medicine through development and implementation of effective innovation and educational approach. This year, we have two recipients, Irini Hanna and Yuxi Jing. Irini is, developed, is deeply involved in medical education serving as co-chair on the curriculum committee, mentoring her peers as an appointed student affiliate advisor for a learning community, and building her skills in the year-long students as teachers course for her future in academic medicine. Because of her exceptional leadership skills 
and dedication, she was appointed to co-chair the independent student analysis for our upcoming LCME accreditation review. Yuxi was selected by, selected by the Associate Dean for Undergraduate Medical Education to represent the School of Medicine on a sponsored trip to Pennsylvania State College of Medicine at their annual curriculum retreat. She has served in numerous prominent leadership roles, including co-chair of the Student Curriculum Committee, chair of the Flexner Dean's Lecture Series, and co-leader of the Ophthalmology Interest Group. She too was appointed to co-chair the Independent Student Analysis. Our next award is the George and Barbara Burris Medical Missions Award. This award is presented to students who demonstrate exceptional interest and participation in providing medical care to the poor, either locally or abroad during medical school. Our recipients are Rohini Chakravarthi and Nathaniel Johannes. Service is extremely important to Rohini and she has shown deep investment in projects to improve the health and lives of others. Rohini has worked with a student-run Shaytree Clinic for six years. As co-executive director, she managed the cl entire clinic, caring for over 300 of Nashville's underserved. She was asked to remain on the advisory board and continues to lead and effect change for this population. Rohini also, as you heard earlier, was selected to be a member of the Gold Humanism Honor Society, where she served as co-president. Nate has a genuine passion for serving both on a local and global scale. He has served the national community by volunteering over 250 hours at Shade Tree Clinic and providing health screenings at local health fairs. He has mentored teenagers on probation for gang-related offenses through the local organization Gentlemen Not Gangsters and actually created a 12-week course on health literacy for inmates at a maximum security prison. Nate has also participated in several medical service trips to Guatemala, serving as a Spanish interpreter and clinical volunteer. Our next award is the Kaufman Prize in Medicine. This award, honoring Jake Kenneth Kaufman, MD, 1939 at Vanderbilt, is presented to a graduating medical student who has demonstrated qualities of humaneness, dedication, and unselfish service in the study of medicine, and will apply these qualities in medical practice. This year, our two recipients are Caitlin Reisner and Samuel Trump. Caitlin worked with her alma mater, Berea College, mentoring pre-medical students and with our Diversity and Inclusion Office to initiate a near-peer mentoring program pairing Berea College undergraduates with medical student mentors at Vanderbilt. Caitlin also coordinated a hand surgery outreach for Nashville's underinsured and uninsured patients. This program has supported 36 patients in the national community who would not otherwise have received this level of care. Caitlin also is a member of the Gold Humanism Honor Society. Samuel uh, has directed a community outreach program at Shade Tree, resulting in over 700 vaccines delivered and obtaining a $50,000 grant for the new diabetes prevention program. He co-founded a bi-monthly gathering to discuss impactful current events at the medical center. A member of the Gold Humanism Honor Society, Samuel is consistently noted for his humanistic patient care, empathy, and dedication to patient advocacy. On an international level, Samuel co-founded the nonprofit Reyes Contracancer, which has grown to affect change in Colombia, Peru, and Guatemala. Next, we have our Dean's Award for Research. This award is presented to graduating students who best exemplify the attributes that lead to success in basic science or clinical research, namely creativity, dedication, productivity, and careful diligence. There are three recipients of this award this year, Kevin Grapel, Rachna Hollier, and Jonathan Knowlton. Kevin completed his PhD training in the Microbe Host Interactions Graduate Program under the mentorship of Dr. Mark Dennison. Kevin studied replication fidelity in coronaviruses Replication fidelity reflects the viral mutation rate and is a critical parameter of viral evolution and virulence. Kevin's body of work included two first author and three co-author publications. As you can imagine, Kevin's research contributions are particularly relevant during this time of the COVID pandemic. Rachana completed her PhD training under, under the mentorship of Dr. Alvin C. Powers. Her research focused on type one diabetes and she made two major discoveries that are changing how the field thinks about type 1 diabetes. First, type 1 diabetic alpha cells are functionally impaired 
and have altered expression of cell markers, suggesting an intrinsic alpha cell defect. Secondly, she notes that a rare form of diabetes caused by an autosomal dominant variant in hepatocyte nuclear factor 1 alpha, HNF1A, the first studies of human pancreatic islets in this form of diabetes, which provided a new functional rationale for a clinical alternative to current therapy. Her body of work included one first author and seven co-author publications. Finally, Jonathan completed his PhD training in the Department of Pathology, Microbiology, and Immunology under the guidance and supervision of Dr. Terence Dermody. Jonathan's work focused on questions surrounding basic mechanisms of viral replication of mammalian orthoreoviruses within human cells. John discovered a novel mechanism that viruses use to build new infectious particles that has produced new insight into the intricacies of viral protein folding and the step-by-step -step process that occurs during the release of new particles during an infection. His body of work includes one first author and three co-author publications. Our next award is the Dean's Award. This award is presented to medical students distinguished by outstanding service to the School of Medicine and the community. The issuer's recipients are Leah Chisholm and Kiana Jackson. Leah was appointed to serve on the, on the admissions committee and elected by her class to the Council of Class Officers. She has held leadership roles with the Student Wellness Committee and the Student National Medical Association and was nominated by the deans of the medical school as a fellow in the Cal Turner Program for Moral Leadership, where she worked with students across the Vanderbilt Professional Schools to create and develop service projects within the national community. She serves as a peer mentor in her learning community as a pre-med advisor at Vanderbilt, volunteers as a mentor through gang, gentlemen and not gangsters, and is consistent service through leadership and volunteering roles at the student-run Shade Tree Clinic, including co-directing the urology specialty clinic. Kiana served as president of the Student National Medical Association, where she helped transform campus discussions on race and medicine in addressing healthcare disparities. As the Shade Tree Benefit Dinner co-chair, she led fundraising efforts of over $110,000 for Vanderbilt student-run free clinic. She helped create the first acting internship in a surgical subspecialty and changed the role of medical students on the plastic surgery service by creating a student pager system and call calendar. She has served on numerous committees, including the Learning Environment Task Force, the Learning Environment Assessment and Feedback Committee, the Admissions Committee, the Second Look Weekend Committee, and the Wellness Committee. I will now present the School of Medicine Award of Distinction. This award is presented to a graduating student who has demonstrated outstanding leadership and service to the School of Medicine. It is my great pleasure to present this award to two outstanding individuals, Shervin Edamad and Varun Menon. Shervin uh, has demonstrated a unique ability to bring people from discipline, different disciplines together toward a common vision and mission. He was the co-president of the Student Wellness Program where he led a team of 16 students as part of a, the largest student-run organization and a nationally recognized model for medical student wellness. For two years, he has served as an influential voice on the Executive MD Admissions Committee and the Medical Innovators Development Program, where he advises on curriculum development and has served as a mentor to junior students. Shervin pursued a research fellowship in consumer health informatics and medical education, and this will work culminated in his launching a new medical student elective. Varun represented his peers as president of the class for four years, where he led the medical school student government. He collaborated with me and the administration and others and faculty to establish a new course called the Introduction to the Business of Medicine for Vanderbilt senior medical students. Varun was elected by his peers across the state for leadership roles in the uh, American Medical Association and the Tennessee Medical Association. He has represented the physicians and medical students of Tennessee and the AMA House of Delegates, and has played a major role in transforming Vanderbilt's small school chapter into a large cohort of Vanderbilt students involved in advocacy efforts in organized medicine at the local, state, and national levels. As class president, Varun also was selected to serve as the banner bearer for commencement, and he will do that in 2021. The next award is, the, is selected by the members of the class of 2023, our current first year class, and is named the Policy Boost Award. The following awards 
will be ones that were selected by the class for other members of the class. The Paul C. Hoos Award is given in recognition of excellence in student teaching in the basic sciences and foundation of medical knowledge phase. It is also given to express the first year's appreciation for the assistance of members of the graduating class. This year's Hoos recipient is Gautam Rangavajla. Gautam has been a consistent volunteer at Shade Tree Clinic, teaching junior medical students clinical reasoning and physical examination skills. He also focused on his education skills, participating in over 30 hours of education training and 36 teaching hours with direct feedback on his own teaching skills. Mason Alford, first year class president, said this about Gautam. Gautam has served as an invaluable resource for the first year class as we have navigated a challenging medical curriculum. In his teaching, Gautam encourages students to think critically, connect disparate concepts, and he's always bringing scientific questions back to patient care. He is a warm and caring educator and is well deserving of the Hoos Award. Congratulations, Gautam. The next two awards are voted on by members of the graduating class. The Leonard Toe Humanism and Medicine Award presented by the Arnold P. Gold Foundation, recognizes a graduating student deemed to be exemplary in their compassion and sensitivity in patient care. The Chapman Society Award is presented to a member of the class possessing qualities combined to make the ideal doctor, the person that fellow classmates would most like to have as their personal physician. Sorry, I always break up at this award. This is a really meaningful award. And you may wonder why I didn't announce the toe award winner at first. I skipped that one. And that's because we have a historic moment with these two awards. The class voted the same person to receive both. And the recipient is Lauren Barr. Lauren worked Shade Tree for more than three years in a variety of roles, including co-executive director, where she managed the entire clinic, caring for over 300 nationals underserved. She was also asked to serve on the student board of advisors for three years. In addition to shepherding the clinic through a transitional location, Lauren was instrumental in the creation of a patient advisory board for the clinic. Complementing her academics and service, Lauren served in national and regional leadership as a student representative in the Tennessee Academy of Family Physicians and the Tennessee chapter delegate to the AAFP National Congress of Student Members. She has been involved in community-based health research with a focus on behavioral interventions in postpartum Hispanic women with obesity and is also a member of the Goal of Humanism Honor Society. Congratulations, Lauren. Finally, it was announced earlier today in the Chancellor's message, our Founders Medalist, and that person is Dr. Kiana Jackson. Sorry, I always, get, I always break up in ceremonies like this. So each spring, our Founders Medals are awarded to one exceptional student in the graduating class of each of Vanderbilt's 10 10 schools and colleges. They represent the highest honor that our university bestows onto our students and have been awarded annually since the awards were first endowed by Cornelius Vanderbilt in the first year of presentation in 1877, 142 consecutive years of Founders Medalist. As highlighted a moment ago, Diana is an extraordinarily accomplished and talented woman, and we are delighted that she'll be remaining at Vanderbilt for her plastic surgery residency. Congratulations, Kiana. Now, I would actually like to make some personal remarks uh, to this class. While we've just acknowledged some outstanding individual award winners, today is about everyone. Today is about all the graduates, both for the achievement of your obtaining your medical degree, but also for what lies ahead of you. We eagerly await each and every individual in this class achieving their full potential, both personally and professionally, and utilizing the gifts that you possess. So speaking of gifts, I want to highlight three gifts uh, today and talk about three gifts. First, there's a gift from the School of Medicine Dean's Office to you, the graduating class. It has been a tradition to select a book for the class and give it to you as part of the send-off. And the issue of the book is called Peak, Secrets from the New Science of Expertise by Anders Ericsson. So, so why this book? Why did, why did we choose this one? Well, Dr. Erickson focuses on the fact that all of us, all of us have the seeds of excellence within us. It's just a question of nurturing them, setting goals, getting feedback, identifying patterns, and motivating yourself. 
Well, the beauty of what we have seen in you this class and look forward to in the future is not just seeing you nurture your own seeds of excellence, but watching what collectively springs from those seeds, your ongoing interactions with each other and your integration into the larger medical profession and you're becoming leaders of that profession soon and far, far into the future. Deans Coutrere, Fleming, and I each have written a message of congratulations in the front of each book for each of you, letting you know how happy we are for you and wishing you well for the future. Second, second gift. There's a gift from each of these graduates that are online to the family and friends who are out in the community. So they actually wrote thank you notes. So at their retreat this spring, the seniors were given an opportunity to write a note on a Vanderbilt note card uh, to an individual or a group of people thanking them for what they've done to nurture them and support them along their path to becoming a doctor. They were going to read these in person at graduation, but then again, we're all having to be a little bit flexible these days. So some of these uh, who are directed at individuals, they will be mailed directly to you for you to read. Some of them, on the other hand, are written to groups of people. And our graduating seniors will receive the cards back and they will connect with you, the people to whom they've written the message, and read those messages to you and share them with you because you are so important to them. The fact that they've even written these notes to you speaks to the importance of community and that none of us, the faculty, the administration, our graduates, none of us do what we do or achieve what we do as an individual in a vacuum. It's all about community. The third and final gift is another gift from the graduates to the School of Medicine and to the Medical Center, something that they're helping launch that will spread far, far into the future. The colorful chain in the vase that you see behind and to my left represents the beginning of a larger project for the School of Medicine and for the Medical Center. As physicians, we are integral, but an insufficient component of the team needed to promote human health. We also rely on the nurses, the food preparers, the administration, the environmental staff, and many, many others to optimize the health of those we serve, the individual patients that Dr. Pearson talked about earlier. This class actually helped launch the chain, each providing a link. On one side of each person's link is their name and the names of all of those people they believe help them accomplish and do what they do every day. On the back side is a word or a phrase that represents why they are proud to work and have learned here at Vanderbilt. While we hope that to grow this chain from what is now about 600 links to more than 20,000 with every individual at the medical center being able to provide a link, this class has helped launch this project to develop a tangible representation of the values by which we live as Vanderbilt physicians, that caring makes community and nothing we do, we do alone. So now, thank you for letting me speak to you. I would like to turn this over, the program over back to Dr. V Dr. Varun Menon, the class president for 2020 to deliver his talk to the class entitled, The Class Minted by the Pandemic. Dr. Menon. Thank you, Dr. Brady. Family and friends, faculty and staff, and doctors of the class of 2020. 101 years ago, the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine, class of 1919, returned to campus for their final year amid a global pandemic. They had ground life to a halt in Nashville and across the nation. Their days and nights were dominated by crisis as most, if not all the medical students were drafted into the Student Army Training Corps and the government took over their dorms with the Great War still raging. But despite the challenges they faced, this class found meaning and purpose in the service they were able to give to the community. Service that the communities in and around Nashville came to depend on. In their own words, as recorded in the Commodore Almanac for the school year 1919, something happened to make us feel that we were of some use in the world after all. Volunteer efforts all across Middle Tennessee brought to this class of soon to be doctors the widespread gratitude and acclaim of the entire city. Now, more than a century later, 
we are confronted with the crisis that echoes the dread of 1918. And our class has responded to this crisis with remarkable resilience. While having to remove ourselves from the clinical environment early and suspend every single hallmark social occasion that we can never share again, we have nevertheless continued caring for patients, introducing them to novel telehealth technology, and have joined numerous volunteer efforts from babysitting toddlers to serving senior citizens with errands and other tasks, all to do our part in these most difficult times reminiscent of that troubled period before any of us were born. We are, as the class of 1919 before us, the class minted by the pandemic. As the historian John Barry wrote in his book on the 1918 Spanish flu, titled The Great Influenza, what's true of all evils in the world is true of plague as well. It helps men to rise above themselves. Yes, these words ring just as much true today and in our age. While this pandemic has taken much from us and tested us every single day with isolation from our family and our friends and our loved ones, it has forged our generational character and imbued within us a sense for the greater calling of the profession that we are about to enter. The oath we are about to take is a product almost entirely of tradition, one that began with Hippocrates and has been informed by successive generations of young doctors from around the world. But there is one original addition from this class, one which reflects our unique identity as the class of doctors beginning our practice of medicine in the middle of a pandemic. It reads to heed the call of the community and to uphold justice and to act decisively in times of crisis. While our duty as physicians must always be to the patient in front of us first, this crisis has forced us to accept that we have another responsibility, one that is tied inextricably to our first. To serve our patients wholly, we must also confront threats to the health of the public by seeing the public as our patient in kind. We act also in the broader interests of the individual patients to whom we owe our first and unimpeachable duty. But while this crisis has given us a renewed sense of our purpose and place in the world, it has also revealed to us some of the disturbing realities that are that are in the troubled system that we are joining. By now, I hope everyone has heard of Dr. Ming Lin, this emergency physician from Bellingham, Washington, employed at a conglomerate health system by a staffing corporation, brought up concerns early in this crisis that not enough was being done to prevent the spread of the coronavirus, shedding light on appalling personal protection standards for doctors, nurses, and staff alike. When his concerns were not addressed, he spoke out publicly as is his right as a medical professional. As a result, he was terminated. A highly regarded emergency physician fired in the middle of a global pandemic for having the audacity to think for himself and to speak up against the improper practice of medicine, to speak up and defend the truth. It sounds like it should be an anomaly and yet it is not. This is the plight faced by doctors and nurses all over our country today, right here, right now, given no protection and no voice. Yes, this crisis has revealed to us with all too deadly consequences the many ills of our healthcare system, fed by the growing power of various non-clinical forces over the autonomy of physicians, as Dr. Lin's case so jarringly demonstrates. But we cannot shift blame all onto others, far from it. Doctors are just as much to blame in not standing up to and sometimes abetting the shrouded abuses that occur in healthcare every day. And that failure should be a lesson to our class. The everyday physician choices that physicians make, including the ones that we ourselves will be making in just a couple months, affect the balance of power in healthcare every day. Today, we become caretakers of a profession whose ability to act in the objective interest of the patient is increasingly besieged. And our choices make all the difference. We must resolve to fight for this calling we now inherit, this treasure that has been built successively by those who came before us and which now passes into our hands, a profession whose independent voice is in grave danger as the world confronts the greatest plague in a century.
Now more than ever, we must stand up for what is right by remaining fully committed to our oath. As the newest generation of physicians, we cannot accept, we will not accept anything less than what we owe our patients to speak up and defend the truth. Wow, that's all I can say uh, for uh, Dr. Menon. Thank you for your leadership, for your words. And I am uh, very certain that the future of medicine is in good hands with you and your class. So thank you for everything. So uh, now a well-recognized tradition of medicine is the taking of an oath, usually a variation of the Hippocratic Oath. The Doctor of Medicine graduates have written an original oath giving special meaning to this tradition. The oath represents their commitment to their patients and colleagues. They invite you, the audience, their teachers, their family, their friends, their loved ones, to listen closely to its words and to hold them accountable to its ideals. This year, the members of the class of 2020 have asked Dean Amy Fleming and Dr. Jeffrey Fleming to perform this honor when I, I would ask them to lead the oath at this point. If you have the ability, please stand up for the oath. And I'd like to ask all of the students to please unmute yourselves. Just the students, please. We're going to read this. Yes. I'll read two lines and then you'll respond back. Reading the same two lines that I just completed. In the tradition of Hippocrates, Maimonides, and the physicians who came before us, I do sol solemnly swear or affirm. In the tradition of Hippocrates, 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 See in my patients a fellow human in need, regardless of identity or circumstance. To be ever mindful of my capacity to do harm and of my duty to prevent it wherever possible. To be ever mindful of my capacity to do harm and of my duty to prevent it wherever possible. To learn continuously, teach generously, and lead selflessly, striving to advance the practice of medicine. To learn continuously, teach generously, and lead selflessly, striving to advance the practice of medicine. To heed the call of the community and to uphold justice, acting decisively in times of crisis. To heed the call of the community, the call of the community to uphold justice times of crisis. To care for myself and my colleagues with the same devotion accorded my patients. To care for myself and my colleagues with the same devotion accorded my patients. My patients. Meet my successes with humility and my failures with resilience. My successes with humility, successes with humility, failures with resilience. And to give those who taught me this art respect and gratitude that is their due. And to give those who taught me this art those who taught me this art gratitude that is their due. Family, friends, teachers and colleagues as my witness, I make these promises firmly, freely, and upon my honor. With family, my friends, teachers, teachers, and colleagues, and my witness, I promise, 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 prom
congratulations, newly minted physicians of the class of 2020. We're so proud of you. Woo! That's good. That's good. <laughs> and now, let me add my congratulations to our graduates. You are now in as long as you live physicians. Most importantly, you're Vanderbilt physicians. I trust that you will bear that honor with pride, but also with humility and a profound sense of responsibility. To all of our graduates, may your leadership be transformative, whether in caring for patients or working as an educator, an administrator, or an investigator, bringing renewed hope, satisfaction, and opportunity to your patients, your friends, and your colleagues. I would like to thank Sarah Woodall, Dean Fleming, their staff, and you, our graduates, this class, for all the work you have done to make this experience today possible. I now invite everyone uh, to watch a slideshow from the class of 2020, highlighting each member of the class and reminding us all how truly special they are. After the slideshow, I'll make one last closing comment.
We made a TikTok and it's a TikTok about two point one million views. We can also like two point one million views. Yeah. Oh yeah, two point one. Oops.
So to the class of 2020, may the joy, compassion, and community that you showed not only in those slides, but throughout your time here be with you always and forever. You are our colleagues, but most importantly, you're our friends. Godspeed, congratulations, and have a great, wonderful future. Thank you so much. Bye.